Well, there does seem to be gradual, small progress in debt ceiling discussions. This is the deadline for deal. The so-called X-date fast approaches. However, we have been here many times before. Since 1960, the debt limit has been raised over 70 times, though after decades of the same old story, could it be time to bring the debt ceiling into the modern age and make a change? Uh, yeah, I think we all agree on that one. Here to discuss is Mike McGinnis, president of the Committee for Responsible Federal Budget. And still with us is Simeon Hyman, ProShares Global Investment Strategist. Maya, I think uh, nobody likes the thing, right? But uh, the, the difficulty is how to change it um, and what that would look like. As someone who favors discipline on spending, does it make sense to divorce the idea of the debt ceiling from these periodic uh, spending negotiations? Yeah, it clearly does. I mean, the problem right now is that we have a budget process that is beyond broken. We don't even put a budget in place most years. It's been 20 years since we've passed a budget on time through Congress. And so the debt ceiling becomes the default place where deals can be made. And in past years and decades, it's actually been something that's part of been part of a lot of constructive deals where savings or budget process reforms were put in place. It's worth noting that under President Trump, the three times they lifted the debt ceiling, they actually did the reverse. They included policies that made the debt worse. But generally, the debt ceiling has been something that can bring along improvements, but the risks are just too high, and they've been getting higher over the years. So the question now is, can we reform and replace the debt ceiling with something that will actually limit the amount of borrowing? Because it's lawmakers who are passing all the bills that are increasing our borrowing. So limit the amount of borrowing, but not limit our ability to pay the bills once we have already put the, the laws in place, which is absolutely a backwards way to control borrowing. And, and so with the borrowing controls, so much of a focus as well, kind of more long term, what is the economic correlation there? If there is less borrowing and, and more of a focus on responsible spending, what does that do economically from the projections that the, the committee is really looking through here? Yeah, so the, the fiscal situation that we have where our debt is growing faster than our economy, it's about to reach the record we've ever had, including eclipsing where we were right after World War II. Our interest payments are going to run us $10.5 trillion over the next decade. We'll be spending more on them than we do on children, on Medicaid, or on defense, all of which are worrying metrics. Clearly getting the debt situation under control will improve our overall fiscal situation. The way it does so is it helps your long-term economic growth and standard of living. It leaves your interest uh, payments in the budget not squeezing out other areas of the budget, including important investments. It helps strengthen your role abroad because right now it's a national security risk. And it leaves us more prepared for the next uh, emergency that we have, whether it's a recession or a pandemic, which is when you really do need to borrow. We borrowed so much during COVID and that was the right thing to do. So it's important to get that fiscal situation under control, basically to remove so many of the vulnerabilities that plague us both domestically in our, econo in our economy, but also globally in terms of our role in the world. And that's why this is not the right place to, to have these battles, but these battles are really important. We can't keep borrowing at this rate that we have, which is really jeopardizing so many things about the strength of our country. Yeah, I'm thinking about what happens after this is resolved, because the odds are extremely high that it's resolved. And what's sticking in my mind is we've been talking a little bit about inflation. And right now, we've got a one-year break-even inflation that has come down all the way to 2%. And a very quiet driver of that has actually been, for the first time since, the, since we've been keeping these records since 1960, M2, the money supply, has shrunk. So uh, on the other side, once there's resolution, if that allows the money supply to expand a little bit, we might have a little bit more lingering inflation than is baked into the markets right now, which is baked in at least a smidgen of concern about the debt ceiling debate. Well, it depends on how this, this deal plays out. So if they actually generate real savings, clearly fiscal policy for the past years has been pushing in the wrong direction on inflation. The American Rescue Plan helped create f inflation in the first place. And then because we borrowed trillions of dollars once inflation was already there, while the heavy lifting, of course, falls to the Fed, fiscal policy was pushing in the wrong direction. If we bring some level of consolidation, particularly in the short short run over the next two years where there may be discretionary caps, that will help bring inflation down a little bit. But none of it is going to do the heavy lifting. And here's what actually I think needs to happen either as part of this deal or after the deal. 
they probably should put in place a commission that would look at three things. One, how to deal with kind of the triple threat we're in the midst of right now, controlling inflation, avoiding a recession, and stopping any contagion in the banking sector. Two, coming up with further savings vehicles, mainly on the main drivers of our growth, Social Security, Medicare, and taxes. And three, they should reform that debt ceiling so that we replace it with a mechanism that's much better at controlling our actual borrowing. A commission is probably the best way to do this because these things are politically hard. Our politicians don't get along particularly well in case anybody's noticed. And they need some kind of cover to do the real heavy work of dealing with our economy, our fiscal situation, and how to avoid additional debt ceiling showdowns in the future. Maya, is, is a commission politically realistic? I mean, as you say, coming to some sort of outright agreement on some of these issues does seem to be unrealistic in this environment. Do you think there is enough agreement to even get a commission together to work on some of these things? You know, I think a commission is realistic because a commission allows lawmakers, most of whom understand that these hard things have to be done. They know that just cutting taxes and, and increasing spending, which is what voters like, isn't good for the long run health of the economy, but they don't want to tackle it. That's why they're making so many reckless promises on Social Security and Medicare. Instead of pointing out that those programs are headed towards insolvency, they're promising not to touch them, but they know that that's not workable. So I do think getting a commission in place is absolutely doable. The hard lift, the heavy lift will be once they actually get the commission there, probably they could come up with recommendations, we'll see, but actually getting them adopted in Congress has proved difficult in the past. So I don't say a commission is a sure thing. I say it's the best option we have at really dealing with the underlying structural imbalances that we have and that are only getting larger over time. Well, we shall see if even they can get that together. Maya McGinnis, Committee for Responsible Federal Budget, president of that organization. Thank you, Maya. Good to catch up with you.